Hello, it's the Friday Talkie. And it's pissing it down outside. Look at this. Can you just, just... Can you... Oh, this isn't working. Turn the thing round. Look at that. Chucking it down. There you go. You've never seen that view before, have you? Or maybe you have. Oops. There. View from my window, which I rarely look at because there's just not a whole lot to see. It's pissing it down. So uh, the lighting in here is actually is not bad because I've opened the nets, which are normally closed. Anyway, waffling. Um, what have I got to talk about today? A few things. Uh, first, a big thank you. Dino the Legend 87. Um, I had a parcel arrived. A couple of days ago, I wasn't expecting one. I hadn't ordered anything off of eBay. I no, no one had said, gonna send you something. And all of a sudden, here's this parcel, and it was from Dino. And it's a couple of games. One is a download, which I haven't actually downloaded yet. It's a download code from PlayStation Network, Twisted Metal, for PS2. I've not tried that yet, because I've been engrossed in the other game. And... <laughs> I'm not telling you what it is. Dino knows what it is. Um, his intention, I think, is exactly what I'm going to do with it. Because, you know, I do these extended waffles on open world games at the weekend, usually. Well, I'm going to do that with this one. Because it is great. It's I, I sat there and played it and just thoroughly enjoyed it. And it's perfect for what I like to do at the weekend. Which is why I'm not telling you what it is. Because... I like to make these things a surprise. I like surprises. <laughs> there you go. So big thank you to Dino, because, uh, yeah, way chuffed. I was in no way expecting that. Totally, it was a surprise. There you are. Um, what else have I got to talk about? I'm just too far away from the camera for my liking. I want to get nearer. I get lots of echo when I'm sitting back there, or it seems that way anyway. Um... Okay, yes, yeah, 65 Gamer Guy hit 200 subscribers this week. Congrats to him. Do check out his channel if you haven't already. He does some really, he, lots of ColecoVision games and he's just got this really cool laid back style that I like. I've been subscribed for a while. Anyway, as part of his 200 subscriber special video, he has done a tag. Um, the, it's an open tag. What? most surprised you or surprises you about your YouTube channel and I thought that's that's a really good topic I'll talk about that today and I just I just watched Mark Verheer's response to it uh, I totally recommend watching that as well um, and I thought I knew what I was going to talk about and then I watched that and it got me thinking about a whole load of other things because so much of what he says is so true which is usually the case because he's a cool and smart guy who knows a thing about a thing or two. So what most surprised me and what most surprises me about my channel are not necessarily the same thing. Because I've been doing it for a, well it seems like a long while. I started my channel in 2007. I didn't really start the gaming stuff until mm, about a year later. The first thing that surprised me was that anyone watched at all. And I think people who respond to this video, I think most will say that. It is a surprise when you start a channel and you put videos on and you don't necessarily know what you're doing when you start. If if you're new to YouTube and the whole thing and you just kind of dive in and ain't got a clue because God knows I didn't know what the hell I was doing or what to expect. And it did surprise me that anyone watched at all. And that was back when it was easier to get viewers or views, I didn't necessarily find myself with a mass of subscribers very quickly. In fact, subscriber-wise, my channel took off really quite slowly. But back then you could get views. And I put up my uh, first collection video sometime in 2008, and overnight it was like 70 or 100 views or something like that, really quickly, and a mass of comments. And I was like, wow, who the hell are all these people and what, you know? Because if what the community was like on YouTube back then, retro gaming was, I don't know. I was kind of unaware of it. 
it took me a little while to find all the people who I know now and you obviously continue finding people over time but um, from where I sat it was all kind of the people were there but the connections maybe weren't or if they were I was unaware of them that seems more likely anyway yeah so that that was a surprise there were some things that didn't surprise me um, thing is before I did YouTube I was I've been on the interwebs since 99 and I had done a lot of various different kinds of interaction IRC internet relay chat and webcam chat rooms I did a lot of that and I got quite popular in whatever forum I was in uh, I, I would kind of get a little bit of a following not massive, but enough to know, yeah, this is worth doing, this is fun, there are people paying attention. But also, when you kind of stick your head up above the parapet, so to speak, you know there are going to be people sniping at you, or rather, you get used to that quite quickly. I got used to uh, haters, trolls, whatever, you know, the people who were just randomly wanting to cause shit, or who just wanted to snipe at anyone who... who, who poked their head up, so to speak. So, when I got onto YouTube, I fully expected that. And actually, probably what surprised me was that I got less grief than than I actually expected. I thought, I'm going to put up a video and just get bombarded with hate. <laughs> and it didn't happen. I mean, yeah, you, you, you get a few. I still get them. I probably get more now than I did, because more people know who I am than did then. But I thought it was going to be like just so much hate and it wasn't and that was really pleasing and and positive responses are so they so vastly outnumber the negative that it you know is great it's totally worth doing if I get disheartened every now and then it's not very often and it's not for very long because there is so much positive interaction and communication um, love that and so, yeah, I, the, the lack of negativity surprised me, I suppose. Um, it was there, I thought there'd be more. What surprises me about it now? Because what surprises me now isn't the same. I was surprised then that anyone watched. I'm kind of not surprised now that people watch, not through any kind of blasé arrogance, but just because I've been doing it and people watch and you get used to that. Um, I don't expect that people should watch. I Do I understand why people watch? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I've forgotten what... I had a point then and I've forgotten what it was. Um, but what surprises me about it now? That I'm still doing it. I think. Not... I don't think I thought I would get bored. Though I do have a tendency with hobbies... I, I, I don't know, I've got some hobbies that I've... Get, re, gaming I've had like for as long as there was gaming. That's always been a hobby, so I suppose I shouldn't be surprised I'm still doing this because it's gaming related. I do have a tendency with some hobbies to drift through them. I, I'll have like a special interest shall we say that'll last a few years and then I'll drift away from it fishing I used to fish a lot and I fished for years and I drifted away from that CB radio drifted away from that over a number of years but that's mainly because people stopped using it I think um I've had others can't remember but no this has not <laughs> I'm still doing it I think partly though I thought I would run out of things to talk about and I thought I would run out of games to make videos of. And I thought I would maybe show every single system and then run out. Um, well, the reason that hasn't happened is because I, I've only started doing that on a regular basis recently. Um, yeah, it kind of surprises me that I'm still doing it. I'm glad that I'm still doing it because I'm enjoying it more than ever. To the point that I am churning the videos out. It... 
I'm liking putting out three videos a day. I'm loving doing it. I am having a problem with it in that I'm not getting enough time to interact and reply to comments because I, I like replying to the comments. I do read them all. What I tend to do, and it's probably a mistake, is I read them all and then I say to myself, right, okay, I know what people are saying, I can have a think about that and I'll come back and reply to them in the morning. And then I don't, because there are more, and I read them. I need to reply to them right there and then, but quite often I don't because I'm not awake enough. But anyway, yeah, that, that is... It's a difficulty, it's something I need to address one way or another, whether that means put out less videos, I... I there will always be people who say quality, not quantity. Well, I say bollocks to that. I've never been about quality, and I'm not about to be. <laughs> it is rough and ready, and I like churning them out. I don't think I'm going to have the time to churn them out like this. Things are happening in, the, or, or, or I've got things planned in the next few months that will prevent me from doing that. I don't quite know how that's going to turn out. I'm not going to go into detail about that at the moment. Ow! That hurt. I should stop doing that. I sit here and I'm... I, I don't exactly fiddle, but I'm, I'm, I'm oh, doing things like that while I'm talking and sometimes it <laughs> hurts. Um, what else surprises me? I don't know actually. I think really that that is it. It's just that I'm still doing it, that I haven't run out of things. Am I surprised? Uh, I mean, something that Mark Verheer said in his is the people making friends and how people are... You get to know them and the people you meet on, on YouTube. That If you get to meet them in person, they're like that. Um, it... I don't know if that surprises me or not, actually, because I did IRC, I did the whole internet chat thing, and you really didn't know people doing that. With text, it's possible to pretend to be someone else, where when you can see the person and the intonation in their voice and their body language and everything, it's a lot harder to fake and pretend to be someone else so you, you get a much better idea of who people are. But I think that didn't surprise me entirely because I'd done the webcam chat thing and I knew if you can see a person, you do get to know them. Um, I'll tell you what does surprise me and continues to surprise me is that people send me stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean it puts such a huge big smile on my face and I do sit here and think, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> I'm just sitting here doing my hobby and talking and playing games and largely talking a lot of crap. And, and it is so... such a surprise. So... I... 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 Uh, I actually get... I, I've got... I've got tears in my eyes here. I get quite emotional thinking about it because I think... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, words actually... When I think about that, I... I know pe different people explain it and rationalise it in different ways. They'll say, well, that person was going to throw it away, or, I, or the person who sent it was maybe just going to bin it. And, and to them, some of the stuff isn't worth you know, it, it, it's junk. To others it's not. It is just... It is a gift with value. Different pe To different people it's different things. To me it's all fantastic stuff and it's such a thrill. I... I was gobsmacked the first time it happened and I'm gobsmacked every time it happens because I, I, I struggle to get my head around it. <laughs> Yeah, that is a big surprise. It was then, it is now, it will probably always be. Because I don't completely get it. Um, I know it happened, you know, it happens on other channels. It is something that happens to people who have YouTube channels and put up videos. I, I, I accept that it's a feature of being on YouTube. But I, it never stops being a surprise. 
and waffling. I don't know exactly what to say about that, except it just put such a big grin on my face, and I don't understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, there are other things, and I've forgotten certain things that I wanted to say, and I, 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 I could sit here and stare blankly at the screen for five minutes while I try to remember other things I was going to say. But I'm not going to do that, because that wouldn't make interesting viewing. So I'm going to move on to a, another one. And I saw this tag via Mark Verheer, and I need to check where it came from originally. Give me a moment, I'll edit here. Okay, ha, I should have known. It's, um, it's a top three Tuesday, Ed T1138, featuring... Am I going to pronounce this right? Kid Shoryuken. What are your top three import gaming systems? Uh, you see, I can't actually answer that properly in my top three. I'd, I'd watched Mark Verheer's response to this, and I said, that's, that's, that's a nut. I was impressed by his import systems and how many he got. And, and he said, well, you've got a few yourself, haven't you? And I thought, have I? And that's a funny thing, because I personally have never bought a system myself from abroad. Uh, actually, no, I tell a lie, I, I bought one from Ireland, if that counts as abroad, because it's like a, such a little stretch of water. But I forget that Andrea got two of these systems for me, and she did get them from abroad. And I am um, i can't do my top three. I'm just going to show you what, my, what ones I've got that actually came from abroad are. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do this. Well, you can see two, three... Oh, God. Here we go. Right, there is... Well, there's two of them right away. The Virtual Boy. In fact, there's three, because there's one there. But we'll start here. The Virtual Boy. That one is from America. And next to it, the PC Engine. Where did I... That, yeah, hmm. Well, yes, it's an import in that it comes from Japan. I bought that on eBay and I got it, you know, it was in England, I didn't have to buy it from abroad. But yeah, that is technically an import. And that's why I think, I don't think of a lot of my systems that are imports as being imports, because I bought them from people who were in Britain who had probably imported them themselves. This, yeah, that ColecoVision is an import. Andrea got that for me a few, well, yeah, several years ago. Um, was it for Christmas? Something like that, or my birthday or something. I was looking for a ColecoVision and she said, well, let me deal with that. Is your birthday or, or whatever coming up? And you could not get them in Britain at that time on eBay. There just weren't any that weren't going for insane money. And this one comes from Germany. What does that say? Anschluss für or what? Orbu module and stuff like that. Video spiel system. <laughs> it's German. It's very German. Uh, where is it? There. No, there. God, I'm trying to do this holding the camera on a tripod and it's not easy. I showed you yesterday my Neo Geo. That's a Japanese Neo Geo. I wasn't entirely sure because there's nothing written on them that tells you. I mean, they're going to be made in Japan, whether they're the US model or whatever. That's a Japanese one, and the way to tell, there are probably other ways to tell, but basically, cartridges are universal. You stick a cartridge in the thing, and depending on where the console is for, that dictates the uh, the text that comes up on the screen. And, well, you put, put games in this, and it comes up with a lot of Japanese. Other imports. I've got a couple. Um, yeah, that, there. That's from Ireland. They, it was made in Ireland. I bought it from Ireland. Had it shipped over. I don't know if they sold this model anywhere else. I'm inclined to think that they were just running out of parts. You know, they, they were trying to use up the rest of their bits before ceasing production. Because really, what's different about that than that, except they took away the metal strip? Had they run out, or were they just saving money and saying, yeah, we won't bother with that anymore, we'll print straight onto the plastic, because you have the, the space for it there. But yeah, that's Irish, and that was bought from Ireland. What else is an import? Oh, yeah. The, uh, 
the Nomad. Again, Andrea got that for me. Did she import it from America? I don't actually know. Possibly. But uh, it's an import model. You, they never sold that in the UK. Uh, this here, that's an import. That's uh, the Bandai Wonder Swan. That's a Japanese thing. That was absolutely never sold in the UK. I don't know that it was ever sold outside of Japan. And then again, this is Japanese here. The PC Engine GT. Um, there's an American model called the Turbo Express. And they're not compatible without a converter thingy, which apparently is very expensive. Um, that's a cool thing. I bought that from uh, Game Station in Milton Keynes, back when they still did retro stuff. And yeah, they charged the earth for... Th I mean, I'm not even telling you how much I paid for that. I did pay too much for that, but it was... <sighs> too good to pass up, because you just... I wasn't into eBay at that time, and you didn't see things like this very often, so I, I had to buy that. But that's a Japanese import. And that that's all the imports I have in my collection. Of all the computers I've got, none of them are imports. There, there are some that are rare, but everything is either made in Britain, and of the ones that were made abroad, they were official imports, official, you know, they were officially sold at retail in Britain. There you go, that's that. Not exactly a, a correct response, because it was meant to be top three. I can't tell you what my top three are, I don't know. I'm boiling, it's pissing it down out there, but it's still bloody hot. I'm sitting here breaking into a sweat. Uh, right, okay, I have something something to show you. I bought this on eBay this week and it's a uh, it's a doofer. <laughs> you stick a... is this gonna be an... Uh, you put an SD card in there. That's funny it's got a little paw print on the circuit board. What's it called? I'll, I'll tell you the name of it, and well, you'll probably work out what it's what it. You'll know from the name: Commodore Disk Drive SD Flash SD Twenty One EC Fifteen Forty One Emulation Commodore Sixty Four Vic Twenty C Sixteen. So you you stick your SD card in there, you plug that into your disk drive socket cable socket do for thing and you plug that into your tape drive and it takes power from your tape drive port to power the whole thing and basically it works like a whopping great big floppy disk I've got something like this on my BBC Micro and it's fantastic I love it so when I saw this selling for a not extortionate price on eBay and the, I believe the guy has some more just search for that I'll, I'm not going to put a link direct to his thing, but I'll put the name of the the item down there and you'll probably be able to find it. I haven't tried that yet. I will be doing that soon. Uh, so you'd, sooner or later you can expect Commodore 64 game videos, though I still have a load to do um, that I've been... It was it Enzor 42 gave me and I haven't forgotten about those. But you can expect a slew of Commodore 64 games sometime. I've got to do these Atari games first that my Mark the Morose gave to me. They're next on the list. Wow, I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. I would normally at this time have a shout out. Uh, I sadly don't write at this minute because mm, I haven't had time to actually look at many other videos. Chucking out three videos a day takes up so much time. And I love doing it, but it doesn't leave a lot of time for checking out other channels. So uh, I don't have a shout out this week, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Coming up, me getting hotter by the minute. Oh, I want to open the window and I can't, it's pissing it down still. Time to build an arc. Coming up. Well, I think I just told you what's coming up. <laughs>
There's going to be a random waffle sometime over the weekend. Extended random waffle in an open world game. And then it's going to be more of the same. Um, system overviews. Um, they're actually turning out to be more detailed than I'd had in mind. Um, they're still being short, but I am doing like a little bit of research before I waffle about them. I'm really pleased at how well they're being received. And, and the joystick videos as well. They're really fun because it's like, research? Nah, here's a joystick. I like this, <laughs> and uh, that's it. A couple of minutes and that's your lot. They're going down well, and they're, they're such fun to do because you don't need to know the details when you do a thing like that. It's just like, I've got this. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm almost done with the N64 games. Uh, I've, there are a few games I've got that I haven't done videos and I'm not going to do videos of because they're just not, they're not really suitable. They're not some, they're either multiplayer or they're, they would be boring. That doesn't mean they're actually boring games, but they would make for a boring video. So I'm not going to do them. Um, one, I just, no, two, I just plain don't understand. I, I've looked at it and I'm like, what? and can't be bothered. I have got one that I am going to do, but I'm kind of saving that. So, um, yeah, it's going to be ST games. Um, I haven't fired my, I've only ever played the one game on my ST so far, and I found it slightly awkward. So I'm expecting to have to do a certain amount of figuring out how to make the thing work, because the ST, to my mind, is quite clunky, having tried it once. I'm probably completely wrong and got preconceptions there that are inaccurate. Anyway, that's that's that. I will be doing ST games. Yeah, it's kind of like more of the same, really. Is it? Okay, shutting up for want of something else to talk about right now. Thank you for watching.